speak with you again, David. And today, the, looking forward to your your views on the topic of predictive analytics for inventory optimization. And uh, before we start, can you give a brief background of yourself? Well, certainly. And thanks, Dustin, for the opportunity. It's a real privilege to be able to speak with you. So very briefly, I have had a passion for inventory optimization for, well, 20 years or so. And I've been very focused on a particular section of it. And that section that I've been focused on is what we'll be talking about. But I am now a business partner with a software as a service company by the name of Right Sized Inventory. And so we provide software as a service online for a particular section of the inventory optimization spectrum. There's all kinds of different ways to optimize inventory. I and our company, we've selected a, a specific portion of it to become experts with. And that's where we are today after 20 years of effort. Thanks. And uh, so, David, you told me that you're passionate about predictive analytics for inventory optimization. Can you talk about why? Yeah. As I mentioned, in the supply chain world, there's a lot of predictive analytics that really is already in use. So, for instance, uh, there are predictive analytics used to optimize supply chain networks, supply chain design and structure, be able to do what ifs and things like that. And also, certainly, predictive analytics is a fundamental part of improved forecasting, for example, demand sensing. And on the other hand, there are already right now, there are plenty of great solutions that are on the market for supply chain network design, supply chain forecasting. And these are really important and they're high level pieces of the supply chain optimization puzzle. But as I mentioned years ago, it was that I began pursuing predictive analytics for a different reason, for a very critical but an overlooked piece of the puzzle. And um, so, but it sounds like you've already listed the, um, the general supply chain categories. Can you talk about what's missing? Well, sure. So it's certainly understandable that supply chain pre professionals, they focus on what a supply chain's future state could be. So for instance, uh, they may say, we can get this improvement if we restructure our net network like this. Or they might say, we need a forecasting tool that will provide X improvement. And really then to use predictive analytics in those kinds of high level areas, that requires changes and changes always take time. But really in the meantime, their businesses are running on their existing supply chain. And so I wanted to develop a solution that can provide big improvements and to do that simply by changing just one or two values in each inventory items in item master record. And so these are values that don't require any changes to the supply chain itself. No negotiations, no improvement projects, no brick and mortar. And it can happen now and not sometime in the future. And as I thought about it, I knew that the key to doing this was to use the power of predictive analytics to determine and to truly optimize these one or two important values. So what are these the values that you would change? Well, the values that I would change are the ones that trigger and quantify replenishment. And so, for instance, if it's an MRP system, the value that triggers and quantifies replenishment is safety stock. In a Kanban system, it's the quantity per card and the number of cards. So in that case, there are two numbers, two values, not one. And in a DDMRP environment, red zone buffer is the value. And obviously in a min-max system, it's the min and the max. So those are the numbers, the values I wanted to truly optimize. How do you use predictive analytics to do this? Well, let me give you an example. So let's say that we have a, a particular inventory item in a particular location. And let's say that that item's target fill rate is 
And on top of that, let's say that last quarter, we actually did achieve our 98% target fill rate. And we did that with an average of 100 on hand. So the question then is, does this mean that 100 is this item's optimal level for next quarter? And of course, we'd have to answer no, because next quarter's demand and supply values will all be different. And that will be true even if nothing changes in that item's supply chain. So the question then becomes, if 100 isn't optimal for this item, then what is? And that's been a, a chronic question, and everybody knows that if you just constantly change an item's one or two inventory policy values, the one or two values I talked about earlier, if you just keep constantly changing those to drive the inventory levels, that really doesn't work. In fact, it usually makes things worse. And also, everybody knows that formulas don't work to calculate those one or two values that drive inventory level. But predictive analytics does work. So let me give you another example. Let's say that a business measures its actual service level performance, its actual fill rate performance over the course of a quarter, three months, a business quarter. And perhaps, once again, we'll use a target fill rate of 98%. So predictive analytics, first, what it does is it correctly represents all of the relevant factors for any inventory item's actual supply chain environment. And there are usually about 12 factors that determine that and define it. Second thing that predictive analytics does is it performs thousands of independent random simulations of that item's actual demand and supply process for a quarter. In this example, we said the, the business measured its service level over the course of a quarter. Then next, predictive analytics for that simulated quarter, for each of the thousands that it does, for each one it finds the optimal inventory level that will achieve the target service level, 98% in this example, that will achieve that without expediting. And then the next step predictive analytics ta takes is that it now has thousands of potentially optimal inventory levels. And so then finally, predictive analytics from these thousands of possibilities, it selects the level that provides the desired confidence of achieving that target fill rate in any quarter, not just like last quarter, the example we gave. So that inventory level that predictive analytics defines, that might support, let's say, achieving a 98% target service level for perhaps seven quarters out of eight or 11 months out of 12, or some other confidence level. And of course, things like the target service level, the service level cycle, the confidence level we just talked about, and many other inputs, well, those are all variables that go into the predictive analytics model. How did you ever figure out the formula for this? Well, I realized that Modern computing speeds, they now enable doing a probabilistic simulation. Some people call it a Monte Carlo simulation. And I worked on it over the course of many years, and I finally developed, and then I perfected, and then I patented, and then I marketed my predictive analytics solution. And so that solution, that predictive analytics, optimizes any and every inventory item in any and every location. Uh, it seems like a narrow scope for a solution. So why? Why? Can you explain a well, little bit? Certainly. Uh, I, I, like I said earlier, there are already so many great predictive analytics solutions for high-level supply chain optimization. And rather than trying to compete with them, or certainly not trying to compete with big ERP, my goal instead is to enhance any environment by providing a solution with significant improvements that can be implemented immediately. So that's my goal, really. Well, thank you for sharing today, David. Well, it's my pleasure. So uh, thank you so much for taking time with me.